Hey everyone, Dave here. Welcome to a new Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, it's Monday and my predictions are right for I don't know the how many time now. If you see here, they just released that, what did they call it? Jester Deck of Fate for a guaranteed Kaja Zawari, which is basically Timit's pair. Uh, and if you see here, I used only uh, green shards, mystery shards for the summon rush of the fusion to make sure I have enough secrets to do this. We're opening our secrets tomorrow for uh, Prince Kymer because I'd like second Kymer on my main and the first one on the Acrisi account. So look forward for this video. I just wanted to quickly tell you, sub to the channel so you won't miss on the next prediction. Now let's jump into the main event of the video. This is very exciting because we're having our first collab on the channel with my friend MTG Jedi. We did a video on his channel, uh, probably, was it a week? or longer than a week, probably it was a week ago now, uh, and now we're doing this one on my channel, so MTG, thank you so much for coming, and I'm excited to have you on the channel. Oh yeah, my pleasure, happy to be here, my dude. I I know you're well on your way to your thousand sub goal, hopefully we can get you there. Guys, hit that sub button for my dude Dave, let's go. <laughs> thank you so much. So, just in case someone i'm not sure how but just in case someone stumbled into my channel but not yours do you want just to uh tell like everyone watching now what your channel is about uh while well, you're talking raid of course but uh, of course how do you want to introduce your channel um yeah so my goal with my channel is always to cover new interesting and different of course you know i have my own take on the fusions and all of that good stuff as well but I am not like the news guy. I try to bring the new stuff that people are coming up with, the creative side of Raid. And uh, lately, I've been just loving Hydra. I know it's not for everyone, but I've been really trying to push the meta in different directions. And uh, like the video I dropped today, we're, we're hitting billions of damage again. So I've been really enjoying Hydra and just all of the interesting and different things about the game i've been seeing this one yes definitely what i love most about your channel myself is exactly what you were saying that you have your own take on things so it's not just like either the hype or the anti-hype uh, it's not the easy type of videos and yeah so i really love how unique you present things on the channel so guys if you haven't like like i said probably <laughs> There won't be many of you that knows me, but doesn't know like uh, MTG, but definitely I'll link his channel in the description. Uh, pay, uh, give him a sub if you haven't already. And yeah, let's start this. So the topic I wanted to discuss with MTG today is underrated champs. So there is quite a few videos about that specific topic, but somehow I feel that there is a certain tier of champs, call them B tier or whatever, that are even underrated that they don't get mentioned on those videos. So that's the main take that I want to uh, like do today. Those champs that just fly under the radar in a lot of these videos, and you might have them on your uh, account instead of the stronger champs that are talked about uh, all the time, and they can work perfectly fine. They can totally carry your account and help you beat content, but they are just not talked about that much. So what we'll do is that we're going to talk about uh, five underrated Legos and five underrated Epics each. Uh, and if, it, if, this, if the video is too long, I'm going to split it into two, but let's just start talking and see how much fun we're having. I bet it's, we'll have a lot of fun there. So MTG, you're the guest. So do you want to start with your first underrated Lego? Oh, I would love to start because I'm going to get people riled up right away. Oh. Let's go straight over to the Banner Lords and please pull up Killian the Lucky. What? Okay. This dude got a buff, but his buff came way, way, way after his fusion, like way too long. So then the people who had him didn't need him. But now there's a whole group of people that have him, and this small-headed dude, his A2 is basically like a Warlord ability here. If you have a team that you're fighting against that doesn't have, you know, all of the stone skin shenanigans, you're going to lock them out with books at 100%. 
And that is really, really powerful. Also, I think his multipliers are okay, but I probably wouldn't focus on damage with him. Um, even though he can do a little damage, I would focus on the, obviously, the accuracy. Yeah. He has that stun on the A3 for two turns. Wow. And he resets the cooldown if it's killed. And then his A1 does decrease speed. And he, like, cycles through all of his abilities because he's getting a lot of turn meter on all of them. Um, and then you can get lucky also with his passive. So the rest of his kit is great. But then, randomly, he will just have block damage. Or extra crit damage. Or, you know, strengthen for survivability. It, so, like, he'll just get random buffs that you don't want to count on, but can be very, very tricky to fight against. <laughs> Especially if you're sneaky and you put him on your arena defense. Well, I, I have to agree. I didn't expect that. And I don't have him on my account. And I didn't know most of that. Like, even the block active skills is for two turns. It's not one. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's a good start. And I don't think I ever heard anybody talk about him. Yeah, everybody uh, just, like, glosses over it. But I think he can be really helpful in a lot of 3v3 setups. Yes, for sure. Yeah, no, that's a great pick. Let me go to my first one. And I think this one won't be unique because the thing is, I'll go to Sylvan Watchers. And I think that generally it's not about these champs being underrated as much as that we didn't have as much time to play with these champs um, as we did to the older ones. Like mm. Killian Zalaki has been out for, what, four years now? Uh, yeah. So some of... All of Sylvan Watcher is quite new, so not many content creators and players got to play around with these champs. The champ I will highlight as my first choice is King Galkobar. Oh, yes. And I think this guy is super strong when I was checking his kit. Well, the design is amazing on most of the yeah. Sylvan Watchers. But Love it. two skills that, uh, that are really quite good for him is that he has a full debuff cleanse on a three turn cooldown with continuous heal so he'll put as many continuous heal buffs as the buffs he removed so if you talk situations like some of doom tower hard bosses like the, the spider or even regular spider he will put a lot of continuous heals and then a shield buff based on his max hp so that's a very strong a3 uh, supporting the team and then the a2 is it doesn't fit, it's sort of a weird kit, but it has a 100% buff strip with poisons. Okay, he will add the poisons, which can, well, maybe we can think, if we think about a traditional team, and I'm thinking out of the box now, uh, three buffs per champ. So if he replaces them by three poisons as your sort of debuffer, followed by a debuff extender and then poison explosion champ, that might kill waves quite fast. Um, mm. So... I used to think less of those champs with like sort of the mixed shed, say, uh, sorry, <laughs> mixed se uh, skill sets where you're not sure whether he's support or a debuffer. But now I think that you can easily fit both roles in. Or, or the other thing is that you can basically switch his role based on the other champs you pull. If you need more support, just forget about his accuracy and give him tankiness and speed. If you have enough support in your team, just use him as a buffer and a buff stripper, of course. So yeah. I like King Galkobar, and those new ones are quite fast, especially the King uh, Sylvan Watcher. So that's my first choice. Awesome. Real quick about King Galkobar too. I really want Plarium to buff him just a little bit and give that block buffs a two-turn duration. Yes. That I think if they made that choice. be two turns, he would see so much more play. Yes. He would give us another good option for Hydra. But because it's only one turn, that's it's so hard to fit him in there. And then, you know, you got to try to find ways to fit him in on other teams. Yes. But if you're going to use him, pair him with Opardon. Because Opardon oh. gets <laughs> every time a continuous heal buff... It fills their turn meter. So he's going to do all sorts of shenanigans. But Opardon is just fun. He's not actually that good. Yeah. Um, you um, ready to jump into my second choice here? Yes, for sure. 
Okay, okay. So, I got another good one. There's no possible way you have this this on your list. In Undead Hordes. Okay. Little Miss Annie. Okay. I, I actually love this champion. Believe it or not. And I have used her to great, great lengths in Hydra. And I think that she is secretly one of the best damage dealers for that game mode, but I haven't had a chance to test it yet. But I know that even from like early and mid game, she can do crazy damage on the Hydra heads or the decapitated heads. Now, you have to pair her with a good reviver because she's going to die a lot. And that's okay because she gets free attacks when she's revived. So you want her to die. So, like, normally um, you would just build her with uh, a lots of damage. And basically all of her abilities in her kit, you don't need to worry about any of the, what the words say. She just does a lot of damage, okay? So, like, if you want to read all the words, you can. Yeah. But the perfect veil is nice on the A2 for the torment, you know. Um, the ignoring defense is great because she's going to get two hits there and it does an incredible amount of damage. And I think that she's even going to be better or along the same lines of a Tervold or um, a Whisper type of a champion. That single target extreme damage dealing. Yeah, yeah, it's a great choice that I didn't think of, of course. Uh, the only call out that I would like to add here is that when you have one of these crazy damage dealers that are single target, like Tervold or Little Miss Annie, make sure to pair them with a Hex champ like Akmatum or Mithrala, mm. because if the head of... Um, what is the head that you cannot hit? I keep forgetting the name. Mischief. Yeah, mischief. mischief. You want to make sure you have um, AoE Hex on the, so it lands on that head so that you yeah. can target it with your single target damage dealer and get your champ back when they are eaten. Yeah. Oh, she'll just pop that head. Yes. She'll just pop it. She could one-shot it. I can imagine that. And I also, I didn't get a chance to play her myself, so... Well, you're not missing out. There's tons <laughs> of Void Legendaries you'd rather have. Yeah. But if people happen to have Little Miss Annie, they can, they can use her here. I'm very excited to hear your second pick yeah. as well. So, uh, my second one which can be controversial as well, is one of the oldies, but in my opinion, goldies, Hacker and Smash Lord. From the Interesting. Okay. Yes. So he's not like, if you have stronger healers, uh, cleansers, maybe he won't make the cut for your main team. But the thing is that climbing early into Doom Tower hard, this guy was one of my main anchors there. Uh, huh. First of all, he's super tanky. Like, look at his HP. He got almost 24k yeah. HP. Uh, great HP aura. It's dungeon specific, but anyways, what I love about this guy, of course, one of the one that actually needs uh, a buff. I want to see this on a three turn cooldown. Four turn cooldown is too long for the game modes now. But this this is almost this is almost always a full cleanse. Block the yeah. block the buffs and full heal. Uh, mm -hmm. His A one, he got a very good chance. He got like this fifty five percent chance for a stun. You won't build him with accuracy, but yeah, he got that chance anyways. And the tricky part that this A three hits quite hard. Yes, it can never crit, but if you have him in the team as your cleanser and healer, uh, and you just need that little bit of damage. You can always use him for that, especially if pairing him with revivers because he can kill himself. So yes, he's not S tier, he's not A tier, but if you're lacking uh, those roles, he can be pretty tanky and he will help you in, of course, in faction wars, but also in Doom Tower hard and any place where you'll need a lot of cleansing. Yeah, and I think it, too, if he ever gets a buff. He'll be very good, not just underrated. Yeah. Um, also, Plarium, like, let his A3 crit. What, what is the problem? It's a legendary <laughs> champion. Let yeah. it crit. Let's just see what happens. For sure. I mean, I would love to personally build him with a giant pile of HP and then see what happens when he crits. Like, let's just try it and see. So, I like that choice. I would have never guessed that one. Yeah. 
I had this guy built with 100k HP and he was hitting hard on the A3. Really? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if he crit, that would be so cool. Oh, yes, for sure. <laughs> All right. So my fourth one is going to be a champion that everybody has. If you play the game for a reasonable amount of time, everybody's going to have this champion. Yes. And I think that lots and lots of people should be using her in Hydra. I think you already know who it is. Who is it? Dark Elves, you're right. And let, let me see if I'm right here. It is. It is 100% Vizix. This, I've just been impressed with her again. Okay, I I go through these cycles of using Vizix a lot, and I'm back around to her again. I put her in this crazy Hydra team that I covered in today's video on my channel. Um, it'll probably be... By the time this is out, you can go over and watch that. But you have 100% decreased speed on the A2 with a three-turn cooldown and ally protection. Yep. Like, you don't get that normally on other champions. And then the Provoke also puts a shield on herself to protect herself. But, you know, it just, like, her kit suits very well for so many different areas of the game. It, I've used her in takeovers on people's 3v3 teams for this provoke ability. You can use her in Hydra. You can use her in, um, like, Dark Fey for the A1. There's just, she's so good, and she fills so many different roles, but at the same time, I feel like her kit works well together. Yes. So people need to go back to using her or, or build her out. Everybody gets her, so, and her she has good damage, too. Yes. Believe it or not, she she has good multipliers. She does. I even love her A1, by the way. I used to use it in Fire Knight early on because yes. I didn't get Cold Heart till over a year into playing the game. I was getting oh Cold goodness. Void Legos, but no Cold Heart. <laughs> I mean, we'll take it, right? <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> but Vizix is a great option. I fully agree with you on this one. Let me go to my third option next. So my third option is, I think she's not... Typically underrated, but I don't think we're talking about her enough. Is Withir. Oh, true. Withir's a crown. Like, when I got Withir, she used to be in my arena defense. Just build her yeah. with lots of, lots of HP and fast. And she's mm -hmm. amazing there. Like, yeah. that passive. Uh, places 15% continuous heal. So, every time she takes a turn, if you make her fast enough, she will keep popping those continuous heals. She got a full team cleanse on a three-turn cooldown and healed based on her max HP. Uh, yeah. She got the defense up, and then again, she's like healing the team again with all of those continuous heal. Maybe another yeah. one that can be paired with Upadrin. Uh, and then on her A1, <laughs> her A1 is an AoE attack. So if you want to use her as your healer in Hydra, she puts out Leech. Maybe you can put her in a Hex or a Provoke set. She won't yeah. use the A1 that much because... Both of her A2 and A3 are on three-turn cooldowns, so she will right. keep cleansing and healing the team like crazy. Uh, when, I, when she used to be on my uh, arena defense, just tanky and fast, it's very difficult to kill the team because she kept healing everyone. So I think we're not talking about Wizir enough, and of course, her design is one of the craziest in the game. <laughs> it is, yeah. I used to skip fighting her on the free-to-play account because I got beaten by... Embarrassing here. Yeah. I got beaten by solo Wither. Like, single Wither on arena defense. I just I couldn't beat it. So I, I stopped fighting her with the free-to-play. But that's a great call-out. I feel like she is what Manaya dreams of being. You know, oh. like, <laughs> every time you look at Manaya's kit, this is what you want it to be. Um, one of, if not the best healers in the game. Yes, for sure. All right, so for my next one, we're going to head over to Skinwalkers. Okay. And this is a champion that I want buffed, don't get me wrong. But Norog has a new use, and I wanted to mention him here because he can still be used. A lot of people um, are asking me, like, what should I do for hard ice golem? Now that there's good gear sets there, since they've gotten buffed, you can put him in with basically no gear just for his passive. Yeah. And he's going to pair really well with Artac so that Artac can stay alive on the boss. He has a Duchess-like passive, and if you just build him slow and tanky, 
he can just stick around in there for you yeah. and the rest of your team can do the work and he's really just there for his passive but if they ever do anything to him he'll be really good cuz that a2 with the block buffs yep. you know one of the best abilities for hydra is block buffs i personally want to see block buffs decrease speed decrease defense some other strong debuff or two there and then his a1 i just i don't like the block active skills i don't mm. i don't think it fits with his kit so i would just change that maybe a1 decrease defense and a2 uh block buffs yep. decrease speed however even if they don't buff him you can use him with our attack and hard yep. uh hard ice golem and that's the main reason why i wanted to call him out today yeah um i understand he wouldn't be my choice but i understand why you picked him up and that passive like when you stack more than one passive like duchess and his um, yeah or maybe venomage when you stack multiple passive that decrease the amount of damage that he, uh, the team is taking uh, the team is almost invincible like even if you use him with venomage and uh, well duchess is not a good fit there but i'm thinking even traditional clan boss the demon lord uh, that team mm -hmm. can uh, traditional team can survive for a long time with those passive yeah. mitigations yeah totally true totally true so my next pick and again one of the oldies by goldies is cesalia from the banner lords love her oh yes. great choice yeah um i got her early i did um i like used her for a long time first of all she's fast she's tanky defense hp and everything um Good aura for resistance, but though that magical light resistance, come on, play him, make it like for everyone. I know, right? Um, that strip, that buff strip, she's very annoying. So like everybody knows how annoying Cecilia is because we all faced the phase the her infection wars. That right. stage 19 is even worse than 20 because of the three <laughs> Cecilias there. So, yeah. full buff strip for the whole team. She push it, pushes the turn meter back for the enemy team and pushes your team forward. That two turn cleanse and full heal almost is very annoying when you face it as well. And then that A1 hits decent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mainly you just build her fast with a lot of accuracy and she can really benefit your team. So if you get to Thalia, don't sleep on her. She's very strong and she can help your team a lot. Yeah, I love pairing her with Lydia because Lydia, you can't get through the buffs on the other team. Yeah. And then when you have Sethalia, she just strips and then Lydia puts the decreased defense and weaken and blocks the revives. Okay. So Sethalia, great. I used her in 3v3, like gold 3, gold 4, 3v3. I used her for two years. Yeah. And so and talking about sneaky picks like for Live Arena now, uh, which I haven't been doing much of, but Me neither. nobody would will block Sethalia. No, no, yeah, they'll let her through every time. Yeah. And, and she's real strong. She's yeah. real strong. Especially yeah. if you don't have, like, the top-tier duchesses and stuff. That's cool. Um, next. Oh, go ahead. No, no, it's your turn. Go ahead. Okay. All right, so we're going to pull up Sacred Order here for a champion that I told people to use so often, and you have him on your account here, Astralon. Oh, yes. This guy, let me tell you, this guy is so so good you can use him for tons of different things i personally like him as a duchess counter pick for live arena like if you save a damage dealer for like one of your last spots and they go duchess you go astralon as soon as they put up that uh, uh that veil he's gonna strip it and do extra damage okay with his a3 He's going to remove all bus buffs from the target if they're under Veil and Perfect Veil. So even if they have tons of other ones, he's going to remove them. Um, and he also does that stun. Yes. Weaken, stun, remove the buffs. Obviously be careful of the sheep, but even if he gets sheeped, so what? It's fine. Totally fine. And the rest of his kit is cool as well. Um, his A2 hits really hard and can revive people. He's got the A1 decreased defense. He pairs insanely well with Countess Licks. So uh, his multipliers are great too. Yes. I think a lot of people are sleeping on him as one of their main arena damage dealers. I agree. 
believe it or not, he used to be my main uh, arena damage dealer for a while. I do believe it. Yeah, he's because great. He hits super hard with this, and he's also CC. So it's just give him some accuracy with damage, yeah. and he's super good. No, I, I love that pick. Real quick before we move on, my favorite arena team with him is Arbiter, Deacon, Astralon, and Countess Lix. It is a surprisingly challenging team yes. for people to beat. Yes. Like you will just beat teams that you have no business beating, and it's particularly good on arena defense as well. Countess and then Lix it, is very yeah. annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's great in Hydra too, very yes. similar to Vizix. Yes, that's true. So that was a great pick for my last pick. And I think, again, he's not typically um, underrated, but I think we should talk about him more, is the Tatura Rheimheit. Oh, I think he's super underrated right yes. now. Great pick. Yeah. So tanky, very tanky, super tanky, fast mm -hmm. for, like his speed is fast considering he's that tanky. The defense yeah. aura, uh, that uh, passive is underrated. He can just freeze using his passive. And you, of course, you don't focus like, yeah, you have to give him some accuracy, but that's not bad. But the veil, of course, fits with a Hydra on a four turn cooldown with it's the good. shield. And then that block the buffs and increase defense on a three turn cooldown. And for a defense based champ, he's, he, he hits very hard. He does. So. He's really underrated and is also one of the champs like that design, that animal design you don't see much in uh, uh, Raid. Of course, it's a pity that they pa uh, pair them with Pix Neil. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> you see, yeah. I, I didn't do that fusion. One of the very few that I missed <laughs> and I'm not regretting it. Oh, man. One of these times I'm going to put her on the list. One of these times. Well, um, maybe after the... four buffs. <laughs> the, I like her. I it... My only problem with her is that she has 27 books. If Polarium would cut the Ooh. books, I would literally start doing content with her. Yeah. I think she's the most books on any legendary, I'm pretty sure. That's... And it's just unreasonable. Like it does not it does not matter what her kit does. Yeah. Even if she was one of the best champions in the game, it doesn't matter because she has so many books. Even her passive has three books. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And they've had so many chances to change that, but yeah. Playroom doesn't usually change the books. And of course, this conversation was so much fun and it ran much longer than we both anticipated. So I had to split it into two videos. This is going to be part one for the Ligus, and I'm going to release in a couple of days part two for the Epics. So stay tuned for this one. Keep playing Raid and I'll see you next time.